I'm Tim Yazzi. I'm from San Felipe, San Domingo, and Navajo. I grew up in San Felipe Pueblo. I live in Tucson, Arizona now, and I am a silversmith slash artist. Initially, I started making San Domingo slab earrings and, you know, chokers and stuff. We had a friend, my mom had a friend that used to make uh, jewelry when I was growing up. So, and then I used to see my mom stringing and my grandma and people. And then when I was in California, I saw my grandpa, you know. So it's it's a big thing. He he did uh, he did um, silver work, and I didn't know what he was doing, but I but I saw him a couple times, you know, playing around with silver and and so um, one of the things that stuck out to me was. Uh, this lady's name was Rose Medina. Her brother uh, came in, I guess he was in Santa Fe one year and he came into her house while we were all there. And and then Indian, he told everybody, um, look at this, you guys don't be lazy. Don't don't uh, don't ever say you don't wanna do this because look at this, he put money on the table. He said, that's what comes from hard work. So that's one of the things I remember as a kid growing up. Um, and also I just, I uh, I get inspired by seeing other people, um, you know, create th create things. And I know when I see something, I say, man, I bet you I could do that. And then inside of me, something starts ticking, and yeah, I think I can do it better. Or you know, it's just one of those things. I've I've always been competitive, so I think uh, inspiration comes from a lot of places. Uh, it, it comes from you know, songs or you know, dances that you hear. You see things in your head and you wake up with uh, with things in your head that you dream about and you say, wow, man, I wonder if I can make that or, you know, inspiration can come from anywhere. I, I just, my biggest thing is uh, inspiration would be the people that I learned from. The two most um, famous people that I'm, I've been inspired by was uh, the guy I learned overlay from Chalmers and uh, Jimmy that I that taught me how to inlay without those two people in my life I don't think I could I don't know where I'd be I shouldn't say I wouldn't be doing art but maybe I'd be a painter instead of a jewelry guy the last bottle that I drank was a turning point in my life because it made it made me realize that I was sick and uh in order to be here now, I had to either quit or just go ahead and do what the alcohol does to natives, us, you know. Um, that was the day when I said, no, I can't do this no more. And um, after you decide to to quit, you gotta you gotta be you gotta be honest with yourself first of all because that's the only way it's gonna happen. You can't lie to yourself anymore. Uh, before all this, I, I would do my art, and uh, and it was all through the drink. I mean, I I did I did a lot of art with drinking and smoking, and you know, and uh, and when when that happened to me, it just a light came on and. And now uh, the stuff that I do, the, my art is just so much better because I got a clear head. And it doesn't matter who, who thinks I'm good or bad or whatever, or it just has to be good enough for me. And my for right now, my art is good enough for me. I'm making things that make me happy. And then in turn, it makes you know, people happy. Difficult, let me see. Difficult was figuring out how to do uh, the overlay just straight out in the beginning. It took me, I get, I, I get, I get on my wife because she tells people, oh, he does, he makes it, he does it so easy or it's easy for him. And, and that was, that's not the case. It's not, it's really not easy. Um, but the most difficult thing I probably had to learn is how to discipline myself to sit down and and 
actually do the designs and 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 cut it out straight and not leave saw marks all those little things was probably the most difficult thing to teach myself.